Welcome to our December 2019 Park City Market Talk webinar. I'm Ron Wilstein, a broker at Keller Williams Luxury Properties here in Park City, Utah. And I'm Doug Olmstead. I'm the seller's consultant here on the Wilstein team. And we thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it's the end of the year and that means it's time to take a look back at 2019 and look at it a year in review for Park City. We always like to do this, look at what happened in 2019 and look at what may be happening in the future. So we're glad you're joining us for this presentation. What else are we going to cover, Doug? Well, we'll do our uh, statistical update for you and show you what's been selling and what's not in Park City and more importantly, what the prices are doing. Sounds good. Let's go for it. We use our Park City Market Talk webinar to provide updated information to our audience. We always provide real estate statistics with prices and number of sales, but we also cover other topics. So let's take a moment to look back at 2019 in Park City Year in Review. You recall that 2019 began with a huge plunge in the stock market. Uh, point, the Dow dropped more than 1,100 points. Economic uncertainty was talked about, economic recession, and of course the implication of big money lost in the recent stock market decline raised the questions about how would this impact real estate, and of course that would include Park City. So we talked about that at length. We also we, meaning Park City, hosted the Sundance Film Festival, January 24th through February 3rd. Always a great time. Films, celebrities, good time to be in Park City. <clears throat> but what also took a lot of our attention in 2019 was the impact that new construction was having on property sales and prices. We pointed out that single family homes are made up of about 10% new construction in the city limits and 15% in the Snyderville Basin. When it came to condominiums, 9% of them were new construction in the city limits and 32% in the Snyderville Basin. So a huge impact. When we narrowed it down and took a look at prices, single family homes in the park city limits were up by 23% in the new construction category compared to existing homes. Snyderville Basin up 30%. So you could see the impact of new construction. We want to make sure everybody understood that. When you came to condominiums, it was huge. In Park City, the increased value of a new condo over an old one, 185%. Snyderville Basin, 41%. These new homes and condominiums have the latest technology, newest finishes, etc., uh, but they do come at a significant premium in terms of price. On the other hand, older properties can be purchased at a significant discount compared to the new homes and the condos, and we wanted to bring that out. To take it to the next level, my team assembled a uh, special report of new construction. We included 35 new construction projects. We made this available to buyers or sellers. And we indexed the different properties by areas, Canyon, Steer Valley, Empire Pass, Jornell, Old Town, you name it. And we made that available by simply calling us or emailing us. And that report is available on our website, buyparkcity.com. The point that we wanted to make is that sellers of older properties needed to recognize that there were a lot of new property choices for buyers to consider and that might mean they have to adjust their list prices in order to sell or upgrade their property so that it could compete against the new properties to bring that higher price that they wanted. So new construction was clearly having a big impact. We decided to dedicate a complete issue of our Park City Link newsletter to new construction. We help buyers figure out how to get free upgrade and bonuses when buy, buying, <clears throat> and we helped existing sellers understand how to compete against them. So it took up a lot of our time, and it also penetrated to our property value assessments. We expanded it to what we call a 3D property value assessment because there was so much new construction impact in the market. So we compared your property, if it was older, against new properties to make the appropriate adjustments, just like a buyer was doing actively in the market. So we would share a, a property owner what their property was worth under three scenarios. Its value in its current as is condition, uh, its value if you completed some improvements and upgrades, but not a huge, and then its value if you completed significant upgrades to really try to compete against the new construction. And we even put together a special webinar for sellers of older properties to help them understand how to do that and made it available on our website. Another topic we covered this past year 
is the five hottest selling neighborhoods in Park City, just so that everybody knows what people are buying and what were most popular. <clears throat> Vail, as Vail always does, was uh, busy and they decided to sell their Park City uh, base parking lot for development. Basically, it's going to be the home of a full service hotel and spa with residential units, with some commercial space for dining, for retail, for other skier services, and of course, parking garages underneath. So we're not losing the parking, but it's going underground and then the development will be above that. They also announced, and I actually wrote it uh, yesterday, their new chairlift, they call it Over and Out, and it's designed to uh, make the traffic move a little bit better, particularly at the end of a ski day. Um, you had picked up guests at the bottom of the tombstone lift and it would take them over to the top of the Sundance lift, allowing skiers to more easily descend into the canyon's village. <clears throat> this helped to uh, not have a lot of bottleneck at the uh, gondola coming down at the end of the day and it's, um, it's a nice lift. We covered also throughout the year <clears throat> how to appeal your property taxes to make sure that property owners weren't paying too much and did that timely around the notices that they received from the counties. And then we covered the secret of buying a Park City property. <clears throat> and the basis of this was we acknowledged the fact that one out of three listed properties were reasonably priced. And how do you negotiate correctly against a correctly priced property versus two thirds an overpriced property? We pointed out that reasonably priced properties sell quickly. There's plenty of competition. You need to negotiate them wisely and not try to get a bottom bottom price or someone else will probably buy it. On the other hand, overpriced properties take longer to sell, sometimes don't sell at all. And so there's a process in which maybe an owner needs to realize their property is overpriced. And, uh, you know, buyers have to wade their way through that. They don't want to pay, overpay for a property. They want to make a supportable case for offering whatever they offer. And then the seller needs to either agree that the case is valid or hold onto their property. <clears throat> Before the ski season, we always talk about what buyers and sellers tend to do before the ski season. Some buyers want to buy a property before the ski season. A couple of reasons. They want to get it ready for personal use and they also want to put it into a rental program to maximize their rental income. Now sellers, they want to get their property ready for the ski season. They'll do so before the ski season and it's the best way to get top dollar because they'll have their scheduled rentals, they'll have anticipated income and if that's important for a buyer to supplement their purchase, it's available during negotiations. You always get the highest price for your property at the beginning of a ski season. And as time passes on during the ski season, selling prices tend to drop. They drop for basically two reasons. There's less rental income expected as the ski season progresses and the days on the market are longer and buyers tend to expect to get a greater discount off the list price as the season moves on. Last year, we featured Lower Deer Valley as a uh, community and as a real estate sales market, looking at its convenient location to Main Street, uh, the fact that it offered four seasons activities from skiing to mountain hiking and biking and at summer concerts, you name it. The seafood buffet is always great. You got to catch that during the ski season. And then the exceptional real estate. The thing that we pointed out, which was really a change in the market for Lower Deer Valley, is they had 14 sales of homes over the past year, uh, ranging in price from a million three ninety to five point one million, and there were currently 11 homes on the market, which was a pretty much a balanced market by resort standards. On the other hand, condos were significant. 44 sales had occurred in the past year. Prices ranged from 712,000 all the way to four million, and there were only going into the ski season. 10 condos on the market, which equated to a 2.7 month inventory. A balanced market in a resort market is nine months. So there's heavily favored sellers, either existing sellers on the market or people considering putting their property on the market um, in order to sell it in the ski season. Loud market, different story, only three sales over the last year. Prices range from 545,000 to 765. Five lots on the market, which is in effect an oversupply when you can only sell three in a year period. We announced Mayflower Mountain Resort. Uh, it had been acquired back in 2017, the land. And um, now that the plan was starting to unfold with the details 
We cover those in great detail. I'll just highlight some here, putting them into categories. Residential, the project is expected to have 1,560 residential units with 95,000 square feet of workforce housing and 6,800 square feet of recreational center and a pedestrian friendly plan. Details are coming out as we go. Uh, the commercial side to the Mayfire plan is pretty huge. Over 800 hotel rooms between five, uh, between a five-star hotel and two four-star hotels anticipated. Big conference facilities, 250,000 square feet of commercial space. Uh, it's going to be quite impressive. And then the resort itself will have 900 acres of skiable terrain, possibly added to Deer Valley. Also could be a standalone resort. Time will tell on that. Uh, new lifts will be going in and um, ice skating rink and a whole bunch of things here. So that's the Mayflower Resort, but it's going to take some time to develop fully, uh, but it will be impressive to watch. And then finally, uh, Park City's newest resort, Woodward Park City, uh, just opening here, and you can go to campwoodward.com to get details, but I'll highlight a couple real quickly for you. This is a uh, 365 days and nights a year open facility and it's where the Gargoza tubing park was at Parley Summit. There's an action sports hub with 66,000 square feet of indoor facilities with floor springs and trampolines and air tracks and all sorts of different things going on there. Uh, very impressive. There's a video on the website you can watch on each of their main sections. There's the mountain park uh, which has terrain zones as well and uh, you can learn a lot and learn freestyle skiing there. There's 120 acres of fun, bumps, jumps, you name it, in their overall sports park. And of course, there still is the tubing park. Um, so it's a very impressive facility. Just open, you wanna check it out and uh, go to campwoodward.com. So you can see that 2019 was a very big year and 2020 is even going to be bigger. A lot will be happening. So we'll take a look at 2020 starting next month, beginning, of course, with my predictions for Park City Real Estate for 2020. So catch that in next month's webinar. Uh, also catch our latest update newsletter, Park City Link, at December issue came out. Very relevant topics there. You can read it on our website at buyparkcity.com forward slash Park City Link. Or if you're on our mailing list, you either have already received it or you're about to. All right, let's turn our attention to the Park City real estate market. Look at what's been selling and where prices are going. The market continues to be mixed in a number of categories. Over the past year, there's been 1,356 sales. This consists of homes, condominiums, and vacant land combined. That's all real estate brokerages combined, and that is up 4% or 55 sales from the year before. And this graph breaks it down between homes, condos, and lots. The red bar is 2019, the gray bar is the year prior. You can see that homes are up 4% from 526 sales up to 545. Condominiums up a huge 16% from 599 sales to 696. And lots were down 35% uh, from 176 sales to 115. Now let's focus in on homes here. We broke it down into the Park City and the Snyderville Basin area. You can see that the number of sales in Park City of homes it's up 13% from 163 to 184, 21 more sales. Uh, almost level, just slightly down in the Snyderville Basin, statistically 1%, dropped just two fewer sales. And condominiums in Park City city limits were up 8% from 321 to 347. And in Snyderville Basin in the county area, up 26%, which is enormous, from 278 to 349. Wow, and it's worth pointing out last year, the previous year, not this last 12 months, uh, was really a slowdown in the number of sales, and so we're seeing a rebound, a healthy sign in the market. <clears throat> when we turn our attention to vacant land, it's down in both categories. There's not that much land available in the Park City limits, but you can see it dropped from 31 to 17. And in the Snyderville Basin, 32% decline from 145 sales to this past year, 98 sales. But let's take a look at prices because everyone wants to know where their property values are going. Here we see home medium sold prices, again broken into Park City, the Snyderville Basin, just slightly down in the Park City limits 
from a median price of $2 million down $25,000 to $1,975,000 and up almost the same amount, 1%, Snyderville Basin climbing up to $1,250,000 from the previous one million two hundred thirty-five thousand, and turning our attention to condominiums in Park City, uh, they were down twelve percent from eight hundred eighty-five thousand to seven hundred seventy-five thousand, but in the Snyderville Basin they were up fifteen percent from five hundred thirty-nine five hundred all the way up to six hundred eighteen thousand dollars. And now we're looking at land, and we're seeing an increase either six percent or seven percent, six percent in the city limits climbing up to 1.1 million from the previous 1,035,000. Again, we reported earlier on the graph that there weren't that many sales, but it's nice to see the prices going up. In the Snyderville Basin, it climbed from 493,000 all the way up to 527,500, a 7% increase. We like to look at the average time in the marketplace because it gives us a sense of the sentiment in the market. We're now looking here at closed home sales and they are taking on average 115 days to sell. Some of course faster, some are slower. If you compare that to the cumulative days on the market of homes, these are those that are on the market but have not sold. The length of time on average is 259 days, more than double, and it just shows us what we've reported on in the past that sellers are holding pretty firm on an overpriced listing and the result is buyers are resisting it and as a result their properties are staying on the market often without selling at all. Are you interested in selling your property during the ski season? If so, find out the current value of your property and decide if it is the right time for you to sell. Um, you can get a free property value assessment and a free consultation very easily uh, just by contacting us. You can give us a call at 435-487-0151 or send either Doug or myself an email ron at thewillsteinteam.com or doug at thewillsteinteam.com and we want to thank you for watching our webinar. Don't forget to bookmark our website, buyparkcity.com.